Hello, this is Craig from bitsbox.co.uk. In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint a Nurgle Plague Wing from the Putrid Choir. So, um, we have our casting booklet here. The Putrid Choir is this one down here. Now, originally, this was going to be a video for the Pox Mortis. Um, I mixed up the colours, they looked alright on the palette for Pox Mortis, but as it sort of dried and I sort of got halfway through painting this miniature, this sort of greeny, bluey colour. Just look more like the Putrid Choir, so sort of halfway through the video, um, I decided it's going to be <laughs> a tutorial for the Putrid Choir. So uh, if I just call them a Pox Mortis at the beginning, in any of the clips, just ignore that. And um, we are painting the Putrid Choir, and we have the finished miniature right here. Um, you'll see a nice 360 degree shot of them at the end. So um, without further ado, um, let's just crack on. Okay, so here is our Plague Marine from the Dark Imperium. Um, box set. I'm um, using a very similar one to to the one I used in the previous video, just for consistency. So um, it's a very interesting little scheme for the Pox Mortis. Um, I have been looking through my GW colours to find anything that is close, and um, there isn't really anything that really comes close to these colours. Um, so we have to do some mixing with paint, so if you've done a whole army of these guys, it could be a bit of a pain, or you could mix up a big batch. So um, you might find other ways of getting closer to this colour than me, but um, I'm going to do it this way. So we're going to take Ogren Camo, and we're going to take Thunderhawk Blue, and we're going to take um, Pallid Witch Flesh. Now this is for the lightest colour of the armour, and we'll just fade it into the dark. This color. Um, it's an equal, roughly an equal mix of all of these, which I've already pre-mixed on my palette, and um, it gives you this sort of color. It's quite a nice sort of pallid grey green color. Um, but yeah, it's a mix of three colors. As you can see as it goes on, it's kind of like a duck egg blue, just a bit more green. Um, you can experiment. And the majority of this miniature will be sort of this colour and the next step. And then we'll have some darker areas too. Um, I'll try and get it in shot. You can see what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, I'm just literally going to apply this all over the miniature. Um, in hindsight, it probably would have been better if I primed him in white rather than grey. Um, regular viewers will know I actually like to prime in grey quite a lot. Um, this is the Army Painter um, Base Grey, my favourite my favourite spray primer for sure. So I'm just going to work my way around a miniature and I'm pretty much paint all the armour in this colour. Okay so here is how he looks after that or oh, them two coats of that mix. It's dried. And hopefully the camera sort of picks up the um, sort of um, the greeny blue to it. To it. Um, on my little camera screen, it looks more green than it actually is. So hopefully that'll look okay on camera. Um, so next up, we're going to take the same mix, but this time I'm adding a little bit more Thunderhawk blue, so you can sort of see the difference. It's a little bit darker. Um, it's thinned out quite a tad, and the idea is to have sort of a gradient of this going towards. The base, um, the base and the top of the armor plates are sort of a lighter color in the middle. And as you see, it, um, it might even be quite hard to see on camera this color going on, as it's a, quite a thin glaze. Um, I'm going to build up several layers of this, getting getting closer towards the edges of the armor. That'll build us up a really nice. Um, gradient. And on the feet it looks like um, it's darker at the base. And it's on the arm and the head. Um, it looks darker on the top of the head. I'm just going by the um, reference photo. And then with the actual armour it's top and bottom again as, as normal. So I'm probably going to do about three layers of this glaze, and um, just now that this first layer is dry, I'll do another one. Let me sort of work closer. Sort of 
will work a bit closer to the urn. So, it wouldn't be the smoothest transition in the world, but it should hopefully look okay once it's dried. Okay, so them layers are now dry. Um, I don't know how well the camera really picks it up. But you can sort of see on the leg there, it's sort of darker there. As I said, it's not the best um, gradient in the world. You can obviously do a much better job with several glazed layers, but um, you can sort of get away with it not being too neat with Nurgle. So next up, we're going to have Thunderhawk Blue and Ogren Camo, just on their own this time. And I've mixed them on my palette here. Um, it's about one and a half Thunderhawk Blue to um, one Ogren Camo. Um, pretty similar to the previous mix, but with no Powered Witch Flesh this time. And we're going to paint this around all of the edges of the armour. Again, it's quite thinned out. Um, maybe I should have done it a bit heavier. But we'll do a couple of layers. That'll give us some darker recesses. Now, it's not going as dark as I would like. So we may come back afterwards and just add another just add one more very fine um, colour just to have it really deep in the recesses. But we'll work this colour around and then we'll be back for the next step. Okay, so I've been around with a couple of coats of that colour around the edges, and you see it's getting darker um, as we get close to the edge. Now, um, looking at the artwork, for most of these armour panels, that is um, perfectly fine. However, um, on the legs and the backpack especially, um, it gets really dark up towards the edges. So we'll do that on all the legs and on the backpack. For sure, and a little bit on the head, I think, as well. Um, to do that, we're going to keep our original mix, but I'm going to add a little bit of Caliban green into it. So, um, just add a little bit and just eyeball it until you get a colour that you're happy with. Um, the Caliban green is quite overpowering in this mix, so don't add too much. And I'm just going to add it to the tops of the backpack. Um, on the knees, we'll go right in the edges. Now this colour might not be spot on, um, what we've got on the artwork. I'm thinking now maybe I need to buy darkness or something, maybe, I don't know. Or maybe even more Caliban green, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. Um, really, it, it's such a hard scheme to replicate. Um, if you are trying to paint your stuff this way, and then really just um, experiment with colours. Um, this video is pretty much me experimenting with colours to see what we come up with. I think overall we're getting quite close to the scheme. I'm also... I do apologise sometimes um, if I don't get a good angle on these videos. I get too engrossed in paint on the miniature and not looking at the camera. But yeah, also the little dents and stuff in the armour, I'm just going to thin this colour down a bit more and sort of wash it in almost. Um, get a good tip on the brush. So just sort of wash it into these holes. Right, that's a few on this leg. And I'll do the backs of the leg as well. Okay, so here he is with that darker colour added. I went a little bit overboard on his head, so I will fix that um, later on once it's um, dried a little bit more. Um, I've just the light slightly, so hopefully you can see him a little bit better. But as you can see, um, it sort of goes 
light in the middle to dark around the edges. Now again, it's not the best um, of gradient, but that just gives you an idea of the colour. And the last thing to do on the armour is to take some powdered witch flesh. And we're going to edge highlight wherever needed, if my brush wants to get a good tip on itself. Uh, I hate GW pressure sometimes. So, like for example around here, I really haven't got a good tip on this brush, I'm bear with me for one moment. So, um, <laughs> using a different brush now, uh, hopefully that's thinned out enough. We're just going to work our way around these little edges here. Oh, it's quite thinned out, so that will dry a little bit darker than this, which is good. You could also, um, as well, um, sort of almost sort of glaze it into the middle. Um, I'm actually going to wipe that away because it's not great, but um, you could thin out a bit more on that. And sort of glaze it into the middle, like so, a bit less on the brush, like that, and that just gives you a nice sort of lighter. Looks like the armor almost goes to pure white in the middle. So I'll just do some on the knee pad as well, in the middle of the legs. Also, I'm just going to edge highlight. On like the fingers around the hand, so getting shot. Just little bits on the fingers. And it's not a great deal to edge highlight on this guy because he has all the armor trim, so we don't really worry too much about that. And um, you could go around the sort of hooves on the feet as well. I'll try not to get any in the hoof like I just did. Uh, it's not going well today, but um, I hope you guys are sort of getting the gist of what's of what's going on with this miniature. So, so yeah, I'm just going to glaze up a couple more areas with the powdered witch flesh, and then we can move on to um, the trim. So the armor trim is um, a lot lighter than that of what we used on the um, Apostle of Contagion miniature. So we're actually going to take some brass scorpion and use that as our base coat. So um, this colour we actually used as a highlight in the previous um, Death Guard video. But it's going to be our base coat here. It's nice and bright. Now, I didn't want to go sort of too gold. I prefer sort of brass. Um, if you actually look at the um, reference. The gold is sort of more greeny, yellowy, but I thought we'll just. We've already overcomplicated the armour, so I think we'll keep the metallics quite simple. I mean, you could use Retributor armour if you want, I just don't think it's going to look very good on a Nurgle guy. I think it's too. too sort of polished and clean. And also, the, the bolt gun casing will also. Um, be in this colour. Okay, so before we go any further, um, you may notice that the um, gun casing is actually now painted in Abaddon Black. So, um, I filmed the first part of this tutorial yesterday, so I'm now back to film the next part. Um, after looking at him, and the colour scheme seems closer to the Putrid Choir than it did the Pox Mortis. So whilst I was originally filming this as the Pox Mortis, um, I'm just going to say he's, I'm going to paint the rest of him as the Putrid Choir. Just because um, the green just looks more like the Putrid Choir. Um, if, if you have got the um, booklet, what came with the Dark Imperium, you'd, you'd um, notice that these colour schemes are very similar. There's just sort of less blue in the green for the... Pox Mortis. So if you're interested in painting Pox Mortis instead of the Putrid Choir, and this video will just go out as a Putrid Choir um, paint tutorial, then um, just add some less Thunderhawk blue. Um, the the colours looked fine on the palette when I was sort of colour matching them, but as they've gone on to the miniature, 
they seem to be a bit lighter and more bluish. So anyway, enough rambling on. We're going to paint the metal areas with lead bulger. So I'll just stick a little bit on the brush. Um, pretty straightforward. Um, these next couple of steps will be very similar to what we did in the last painting tutorial. So just paint on all the metal areas with lead belcher. We have the gun. Yeah, we can do some spikes. We have its plague knife as well. So I'll just work my way around them with the metal areas now base coated, and I'm also painted like these pipes on the back of the backpack as well. Um, next up, we're gonna base coat the horn areas, and we're gonna take our Rakaf flesh for this. And there's quite a few areas of horn on this miniature. Of course, we have all these horns coming out of his arm. There's several on his head as well. Again, I'm not um, I'm not fantastic when it comes to painting horns. Although these ones with textures aren't as bad. So um, if you have a better technique for painting horns, then certainly use that over this. So we just have one more colour before we start shading these areas and that is a Doomball Brown and this is going to be for the tabard and robes etc. Any cloth, um, also the these little wrappings on the plague knife. So. Paint all them morphine brown, includes this bit as well, and then um, also his tabard at the front. Okay, so now we've got a nice base coat on these areas. So we can now begin to shade the previous few steps. So starting with the brass areas. Um, oh, and we are um, using Agrax Air Shade. Oh, let me not forget that. You probably have guessed. So we shade all the bronze areas and um, all the silver areas as well. Gives a nice dirty, nergly metal. And all the bone areas too, of course. That really starts to bring out detail in them. I'm trying not to let it pull up. Like that, a bit too much on the brush there. And of course, um, the areas we've just painted in the Mournfang, not Mournfang, sorry, Doomball Brown, I should say. So I'm just going to work my way around the model, paint on all these little areas um, with the wash. And then when we come back, we can start our highlights. Okay, so we're now going to be, begin highlighting all of these areas. So we're going to start with the gold. I'm going to take some Liberator gold. I've had to give my pot a really good shake as it was separated really badly. Um, not a fan of GW Metallics, as you guys probably know by now, but we use GW paints in these videos just because they are the mo most common ones that people own. Now I'm just going to edge highlight all the brass scorpion areas. So it'll be quite a light highlight but um, on the art for these these guys their, their trim is quite bright. And as I said before I'm not going to go too gold with them. Still going to have a bit of a brassy, bronzy look and style, just because it seems more Nurgle. So next up we'll do exactly the same thing, but with the silver areas, and for that we'll take Iron Breaker. You could go lighter, you could take Runefang Steel, or even Stormhost Silver. However, with these Nurgle miniatures, I don't want to be too bright, so I'm just going to edge highlight just around all these metal areas, and we have a spike up here. Just 
run a silver line over there and just run the side of our brush just down there like so. Um, there's not a great deal of um, silver metallic on this particular miniature. We do of course have his knife on his back which again is a case of just edge highlighting the top and the actual blade itself. And then we can just run some highlights down the centre of these pieces and just around these little cracks like so. Just have this bit up here as well. Um, I'm not going to worry about the pipes. You can if, if you wish, if you're being a bit more adventurous than me, but um, as I'm on camera, I'll just leave these bits for now. For the bone areas, I'm going to take some Ujabdi bone. I'm going to thin it out so it doesn't dry um, as bright. I always have too much of a stark contrast on there. So you you can paint your bones and horns um, different to me. Um, as I said, not something I'm particularly great at doing. I'll try and keep them simple. It's a bit too watered down there. But you certainly don't want to go too bright um, with these or Ushabdi bone. So it will dry a lot darker than this. I'm just highlighting up to your tip. Um, just keeping it quite simple for now. I just have <laughs> a bit too much on the brush there. So you can see there, we've just got some very sort of basic highlights for the horns. Um, that'll do um, for this miniature. I just want to do just a basic sort of tabletop standard for these guys. So next we're going to do highlights on the like cloth areas. So we're going to take some scrag brown for this. And we're just going to do some simple highlights for this also. So I thinned out just a little bit. And you can sort of see where you need to highlight. Um, you can see where the shade has settled and such. You just need to sort of hit the erased areas. Just doing some lines on the higher points. And I'll edge highlight. Oh, I've got a little bit on there. <laughs> Probably a bit more careful than, than me. Some highlights on the bottom. I'll be easier to show you on the back. Really, um... So these folds at the top, for example, we can just run our brush along. So just paint along all the creases, etc. And don't forget you have these areas here as well. So next up we are going to highlight the black on the bolt gun and we'll just take some Eschen Grey and we'll just edge highlight the top here. Just using the side of a brush we'll just go around these edges. So we just have one more detail left before we base the miniature, and that is to paint the tentacles, and also um, any of the sort of closed pipe in there. This one doesn't really have any of the pipes, but um, you know, on some of them they have like the pipes with the little bits um, inside them. You'll see on the um, art for the image, and um, we're going to paint all these the same way anyway. Um, we'll start with Bugman's glow, and I'll just paint like these pipes up here actually in the shot so you can see what I'm doing. Paint them with buttons glow and we have a tentacle down here. Also little spots and stuff on the armor you could pick out with this colour too. I actually quite like how the tentacles look on the artwork for the putrid choir. So we're gonna try and replicate that. So 
So next up we're going to add a shade wash to these areas using Druchi Violet. So they sort of have like a little sort of gradient of purple from the flesh colour to them. So we're going to start by just applying the Druchi Violet all over them just to give them some depth. We'll also tint the surface of them slightly also, but that's fine. There's a nice sort of purpley, fleshy colour. It's really cool and works quite well on these tentacles. And we can also do it to the pipes as well, I might just leave them how they are. So with that wash now dry and it's given us a nice colour here, we're going to come back in with a Druchi Violet. This time we're going to apply it just sort of over half of this tentacle. Give us that sort of sort of um, colour where it goes a bit darker into purple. A little bit of a gradient and we're not really going to go overboard on this one. Sort of glazing it on but it's quite a heavy, heavy glaze. I haven't watered down the um, wash. I've just got a little bit on the arm there but we can fix it that. So yeah I'm just applying it to sort of the end of the tentacles. So all what's left to do is just highlight these areas now and for that we are going to take some Cadian Flesh Tone, put that on my palette and I'm going to thin it out just a little bit. So it's up to you really where you put the highlights on these, obviously I have the centre of these little pustules or whatever they are. And you can um, also just run a thin line there like so. It will dry slightly darker as we thin the paint out. Now we'll just try and neaten up that bit a little bit. On this one with the ridges, we can just run lines. If I can actually get some more on my brush. Just run the lines going across like so. And here we have the finished miniature. So I apologize for a slight hum from the turntable. I thought I'd put them on here so you can get a nice 360 degree look. Um, so I'm really happy with how he's turned out, despite not being the um, original card game we were going for. Um, I really, I really like this. Um, the Future of Choir card scheme is pretty nice. I really like how the greeny blue colour has turned out. So, yeah, all in all, really happy with this. Um, if you like it and you've enjoyed the video as well, then please do give it a thumbs up. Um, you can leave some comments below if you have any future suggestions for any painting tutorials that you would like to see on this channel. And you can also subscribe if you haven't done so already. And you may um, wish to check out our Patreon. And we're having a giveaway for anyone who is on our Patreon this month, whether you sign up or you're already on there, and you'll be entered into a prize draw for some Primaris Marines and we have the new characters and the new um, Reaver models as well so be sure to check out that. All what's left to say is thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.